Yes. Yes. Is that a small mouth? Come in here. Come in here. What is this? Oh my goodness gracious. It's a smallie. <laughs> How's it going everybody and welcome back to TRF. That's a Tennessee smallmouth. I did not expect to catch a smallie today. In today's episode, we're gonna be talking about the differences between fishing fast, fishing slow, which lures fit into each of those categories, and of course, there's some crossover lures, and what type of fishing, fast or slow, is best for your situation, no matter if you're fishing in a bass boat like I am, or you're at a pond or a lake fishing from the bank. My name's Tyler, and let's talk about it. You know, fishing, or at least the level of fishing that I like to teach here on my channel, is a game of eliminating downtime so you can be the most efficient angler possible. You may be the type of angler that shows up to a body of water, you're willing to set up your chair and sit there and make the same exact cast and fish very, very slow for a long time. That might be relaxing or therapeutic to you, but to me, that's not. That's not the type of angler that I am, and that's usually not the type of fishing that I teach here on this channel. Now, of course, you can take some of the tips that I, that I teach about with any technique and apply them to however fast you like to fish, but just my, my personality, my lifestyle is a more fast moving lifestyle. And so that translates into my fishing life. And so we're gonna talk about fishing fast versus fishing slow, when you should do each one. If you're not subscribed to the channel, hit that subscribe button and let's get into it. The first thing to understand is that bass show different behaviors depending on the time of the year, depending on the situation, I'm, I'm talking body of water they're in, and depending on the season. There's tons of different variables that can affect how bass react. And so you have to understand that I don't care if you're fishing in a lake from a bass boat or a pond like this, bass are going to be changing. You may catch them fishing fast one day and then you try it the next day and something changed but you didn't realize it because you thought bass are the same all the time. They are not. They get moody and they get happy and so you have to learn how to adjust for how those bass are feeling. It's not easy but trust me it is worth it if you want to become an efficient angler. Now let's talk about when you should fish fast versus when you should fish slow. So I'm going to have my, my phone out for some notes here so I don't miss anything because this is going to be definitely a bit of a wordy video but sit back, take some notes. We're going to have timestamps along the bottom of the video as I always do, leading you guys into certain portions of the video to help break it up and make it easier to digest. Um, but following these general tips will definitely help you catch more fish. Will there always be exceptions? Will there be nuances to this stuff? Yes, there will. But if you follow these tips about fishing slow versus fishing fast and when you should do each one, you're going to find yourself at least putting yourself in the position to catch more bass. I can't guarantee they're always going to bite. That's your job. But putting yourself in that position is the first thing you can do. So what is fast versus is slow. You may not understand how different lures can be retrieved at different speeds, but that's just how it works. There are reaction lures like a crankbait, spinnerbait, vibrating jig, uh, top water, you know, buzz bait, just anything that moves fast in the water that a bass may not be able to get as good of a look at before it eats it. It's more of a reaction strike that is going to be a fast paced lure. Slow paced lures are more like your soft plastics, your jigs, anything that, that you know, falls slower in the water column gives those fish a bit longer to think about it before they eat it. That is going to be your slow category of lures. Now when should you fish slow? In which bass fishing situations and scenarios should you be fishing slow? And of course like I said there are exceptions to all this but these are the general rules uh, coming from my knowledge as a bass angler. I just asked my roommate for the the major league fishing events uh, Alton Jones Jr. who's a professional touring angler. I asked him what he thought about these and he agreed so it's not just my expertise it's tons of pro anglers that I get to ask as I travel the country. Um, so when should you fish slow? The first of those is when the water is really cold or really hot. When that water is really cold, those bass are slow moving. They're not going to be willing to chase as often. And especially in the south, you know, where I'm from in Texas, in, in the late June through early September, that water just gets so hot, those bass get lethargic and they just lay around waiting for that one big thing to swim by slowly, as we'll talk about here in a second. And so that is when fishing slower is going to get you more bites and definitely bigger bites on average. Uh, maybe up north in, in New York or something, you can afford to fish a little bit faster when it's really hot, but at least for the majority of the country, when the water is really hot, you're going to have to fish slower. Uh, the second thing is going to be when the air pressure is higher, the barometric pressure, whatever you want to call it. Uh, for some reason, I don't know the exact science behind it. I should probably learn that before I spew that in these videos. Um, but when that barometric pressure is high, 
bass just kind of get squirrely. They kind of get weird. They don't tend to feed on reaction lures and fast lures as much. High pressure is my favorite time to throw a drop shot and a wacky rig and, and a big, big worm and football jig out deep, working it really, really slow. That is going to be uh, a good slow fishing scenario for me. Thirdly, uh, when there's no wind. When there's no wind, your, your ecosystem doesn't really have any sort of variant to it, and you know, everything's kind of stagnant. And so for the most part, when there is little to no wind, I'm going to be fishing generally slower. Uh, and lastly, when there has been a lot of people fishing in your areas, or fishing with the exact same lures or the exact same techniques that you are, that is going to require you to fish a little bit slower. And that's also known as fishing pressure. I know that I, I probably use that term in my videos without explaining what it means, but that's what it means. When people are fishing for the same fish that you are, those fish are getting educated by seeing the same lures all the time. Those are high pressured fish. And so that's usually gonna require you to either downsize your lures or fish slower. Now, when should you fish fast? It's basically going to be the, the you know, exact opposite of what I just said with slow. So when the water is not hot or cold, but warm, right in the middle and, and, and that springtime, fall time, warm water, that is when you're going to find those bass are willing to chase and eat uh, reaction baits and of course fast moving things. When the air pressure is low, like in overcast conditions, or it's changing. So whether you have a front blowing in or a front blowing out, bass for some reason love changing weather and changing barometric pressure. That's a great time to throw reaction lures. Uh, when there is wind, wind creates, uh, you know, wind current, artificial current in your body of water, stirs up the ecosystem, the entire thing gets going, and that's definitely a way to find more active fish. And of course, if you're fishing in a place that has little to no fishing pressure, you can just throw whatever the heck kind of lures you want. I'm talking about private private ponds, you know, you know, big stock tanks at somebody's ranch, uh, big private lakes, or even bodies of water that are public but just don't get a whole lot of fishing pressure, that is a great place to throw whatever lures you want. In my opinion, it's way more fun to catch them on a vibrating jig or a top water than it is to catch them on a wacky rig worm or a drop shot. That's just my personal opinion. And so if I can get away with it, I'm going to fish fast. So when you first arrive at your body of water, how do you know, beyond the weather and water conditions that I just talked about, uh, how do you know whether to start fishing fast? fast or start fishing slow. Now this pond behind me, I'm going to turn the camera. You guys can probably see it a little bit right there. It is a featureless pond, not a whole lot going on to it. It has a little bit of shoreline grass and I'm not sure about out there, but I'm guessing there's not a whole lot of, of uh, aquatic vegetation out there. It's pretty dirty. I think it just rained. So the water clarity is not great. Um, but in, in my opinion, I don't care if you're fishing from the bank or you're in a bass boat or whatever kind of lake you're at, smallmouth, largemouth, spotted bass. I am going to start by fishing fast. And here's why. Like I said earlier, bass have different moods and not all the fish are going to be in the same mood at the same time. So there might be a little population, a little school of fish on a certain area of your pond or lake. And there will almost always, like I said, unless the, the pressure is high and there's no wind and those conditions for slow like we talked about, there's almost always going to be a few fish that are willing to eat a fast moving lure. And so what I do, I've talked about this in tons of my videos, especially for bank fishing, is when I roll up to a pond, I'm almost always going to fish a fast lure around the majority of the pond to find where those fish are located where I get some bites and then slow down once I've done that and fish more slow moving lures in those areas. Sometimes the fish in the population that want more slow moving lures wanted slow from the start. And so you could have caught them from the start on a soft plastic or a jig or something more slow moving, a suspending jerk bait. But in my experience, like I said, you want to eliminate an unproductive fishing time. If you start by fishing slow, you're gonna make less casts and cover a smaller area of your body of water and the fish just might not be there. And so I know that it's definitely possible to show up to a body of water and just catch them right away fishing slow but in my experience if you if you're gonna it's like a batting average the more that you try this the more that you try showing up to your body of water fishing fast first even for a short amount of time until you find the pattern or find what those fish are biting on starting fast is going to lead to more productive fishing. I'm just telling y'all. Now the two main fishing scenarios that we have all around the country are this. The first of those being ponds or lakes that don't show much visible cover at all or differentiation in contours like the pond behind me and ponds or lakes that have lots of variations in contour in tons of different both uh, above the water and below the water targets to be looking at the bass could be living and feeding around. So let's talk about fishing fast versus fishing slow in these two different situations which are, like I said are the vast majority of the bass fishing bodies of water we have in America. In a body of water with very limited uh, visible or underwater features I will fish as fast as I can and try to find specific areas on that body of water where I got the majority of my bites 
then slow down in those areas like I talked about. So an example would be this pond behind me. I'm gonna probably throw a vibrating jig or, or a spinner bait or, or maybe a swimming worm in these areas, find where the fish are biting, and then fish a slower lure. Now in a body of water with lots of features, let's say the, the, the body of water that I actually began this video on, and you'll see several fish catches at the end of this video here. Uh, it's a lake called Watts Bar in Tennessee. It has tons and tons of different uh, laydowns and bluff walls and different contour lines. It's, an, it's a ledge lake, which, which means in the Tennessee Valley Authority, it has a big creek channel running through the entire lake, and those bass in the summer will sit on those ledges and feed up on big schools of bait fish. So there's just tons of different stuff you can do. And so I started on that day that I filmed the intro by fishing fast. I fished a, uh, a topwater uh, uh, plopping bait, a whopper plopper. I fished a, a jerk bait, soft plastic. I fished a jig, and I just kind of covered as much water as possible figured out the bass were on the docks, and then I slowed down and caught them on the docks and on the laydown sticks. And so that's what it takes for a body of water with lots of features. I'm gonna fish everything as fast as I can to try to find specific targets on that body of water, not just a location where they're biting, but specific targets because I love fishing targets, whether it's deep or shallow. Um, and then I will uh, basically pattern around the, the rest of my body of water on those exact targets and skip the rest because there may be fish there. But again, the high percentage things are going to be on those targets. So I believe that is it for this video. I've reached the end of my notes. Uh, it's, it's really a, a pretty self-explanatory thing, but I think it comes down to, like I talked about in the beginning, understanding that bass are different and that you can't always use the same tactics to catch them. Now I will have uh, an exhaustive list of every lure that I can think of in the fast and slow categories linked in the description below as well as all the tackle that I use in all my videos is always linked down there. Make sure you guys uh, shop using those links below. It'll help you save money and it'll help me out as well with affiliate income. Help me make a living uh, and enjoy these last few fish catches here from Watts Bar and hopefully I catch a few here at this pond. We'll see you guys next time. Gosh, holy cow, holy smokes, totally missed it, totally missed it. Wow. Got him, that was cool. Watched him come out to the top of that tree and eat my caffeine shad. How's it going, everybody? And welcome back to Tyler's Real Fishing. Today's episode is going to be a, a very, uh... Ooh. I like a little bit of stick right here. No way. I hadn't even put the trolling motor down yet. Wow. <laughs> Once again, target area, or not target area, I targeted that little area there as I knew there'd probably be fish there as there was before. So there's no reason to fish a bunch of nothing bank in between the pieces of cover. If I have done the testing and figured out where the fish are, I'm gonna stop wasting my time where they're not. It's as simple as that. Come on, I'm stinking on. There's one. Oh, see that? Get in here, buddy. Holy cow. Holy cow. Holy cow. Holy cow. Holy cow. Yes. No, 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 no. Chill. Chill. <laughs> That's fun right there. That is fun. I apologize for swinging that fish in so hard, but I got him in. Oh, and he's still lively. You could tell that fish was not hooked very well. But that is my biggest Tennessee bass ever. Probably three, three and a half pounds. Gorgeous. And another one on my angler trip for today. Ding. See ya, buddy. Actually, wait, need to get a selfie first. See ya, friend. Go back and live your life under the dock. Man, oh man. They're under the docks. They're on top of the uh, main lake stick-ups. We figured them out. <laughs>